In this video, we are going to talk about what does it really take to reverse engineer a part. You see a lot of videos out there, and they primarily show 3D scanning. Um, and a lot of times it's a, you know, a simple part, or it's a statue, um, you know, or something like that. But they never really show you the whole process of taking that 3D scan data and creating an actual CAD model. And the reason they don't is because it's actually a lot of work. It it's, can be fairly involved. Or they do a part that's so simple and only has a few features, it only takes a few minutes. So I thought what we would show today is the, the process, uh, the complete process to reverse engineer a part. Now, we're not going to show the scanning because we've got lots of videos that, that show all the different scanners um, out there. It took about 15 minutes, let's call it, to scan this part, to do a really good job, and then post-process it, and then export an STL file. But what we're going to show you is the whole process to CAD model this. And it's actually going to take around two and a half hours to do. Now, we're not going to sit here for two and a half hours in real time. We're just going to speed up the video so it only takes a few minutes. But this video is unedited. Um, it is the whole process. In this case, we use Geomagic for SolidWorks, uh, but you could use, you know, DesignX. You could use some other reverse engineering software. Um, but this will show you what, what the real process looks like from beginning to end. All right, so the first thing we do is import the uh, geometry. Uh, uh, this is a casting, a sand cast part, about 12 inches uh, by 14 inches. And the first thing we need to do is establish a coordinate system. So you see him building a series of planes here creating a center plane, um, and, and um, also doing what's called a region group. And we have detailed demos on Geomagic for SolidWorks and DesignX and VX Model and other software we use. Um, like we said, this is just sped up. And it's really a series of creating sketches, building sketches, and then extruding, cutting, lofting, and so forth. So, you know, this is all feature-based solid modeling. Like I said, this isn't a statue where you just do a simple surface wrap. This is, you know, mechanical um, engineering type type modeling, not more freeform artistic stuff. So it's it's just a very repetitive process. A lot of it gets down to modeling technique. Um, where do you start on a part like this? You know, what's the what's the the key feature you want to start with, and how do you work your way around the part? And you can see here as we're putting as we're creating the sketch geometry, we're applying um, uh, parametrics, right? So things like tangency, parallelism, perpendicular, um, you know, we, we are trying to build the, what we call as designed model, right? Because this is a sand casting with lots of draft. It's also the rough casting. So the final machining hasn't even been done yet on it. Um, so that makes it actually a little bit harder for like hole locations and things like that, um, because they haven't been machined in. So sometimes you got to do a little bit of guesswork. Also, everything has draft on a cast part like this. Um, so reverse engineering it versus building it from scratch um, can actually be a little more difficult because you have to, you're scanning an imperfect manufactured part and you have to try to figure out what was the design intent to begin with. You know, should these holes be, uh, you know, at, at this distance away, or should it be centered on this other hole, or, you know, whatever it may be. So, um, as you see here, this gives you an idea of the whole process, um, and it usually takes hours to days, depending on the complexity. The more features on a part, the longer it takes, and the more, let's call it rough, or in its, you know, rough manufactured state, um, the harder it can be. Parts like this that are rough cast, can be very difficult because again we're trying to figure out what was the you know what was the design intent here so once you're done you can compare your you know your CAD back to the uh, scan data see how it looks uh, but once you you know feel you've got a good model then you can export that CAD model as I just step parasolid so that's kind of the whole process to go from raw scan data to an actual CAD model as you see here this was about two and a half hours with an experienced um, designer who's been doing reverse engineering for a while. Uh, somebody less experienced might take a half day or a day, uh, but it's not uncommon that most parts take a day, day or longer to reverse engineer. So that's the one thing that we just don't see out there 
uh, in the industry a, a lot is really showing the whole process. So hopefully uh, this will enlighten you on what it really takes to reverse engineer a part.